Tim Man here again. Uh, two things I want to talk about tonight. Um, the H-Wave on our pulse motors, which is what we want to achieve. Um, got one pulse per magnet pass. As you can see the high voltage spike on the top and our H-Wave to go with it. So that's what we want. Um, when you're doing this, just start your motor up on low, or should I say high resistance, and slowly turn it up till it picks up speed. And then what you want to do is back it off until you see it start to pulse, second pulse. So at the moment it's drawing 47 milliamps from the run battery. You drop it down just a fraction, you'll see that second pulse coming. There's no H-Wave on it, and our amp draw's gone up to 62 milliamps, and the rotor's slowing down. So, down low you'll get um, between three and four pulses. That's three pulses there. So you want to get that H-Wave as wide as you can without it going on to the second pulse. So you find your second pulse there, turn your pop back down in resistance again until you get that one pulse with the H-Wave and that'll be its optimum performance. Uh, there's videos on YouTube where guys use LEDs but you need a shiny flywheel or a rotor for that otherwise you'll see nothing but around light. Um, so that's running pretty happy there, 43 milliamps we're pulling. Uh, 1730 RPM. So that's the idea behind the pulse motor, you don't want it wound right up, see how fast you can make it go. That's all good fun but it's not doing you any favours. Um, SD's having a bit of trouble with resistors and that getting hot. If you can get it like this so it's only one pulse, you should be right. As soon as you start getting two pulses, your resistor and your pod is now doing twice the work. So you want that one pulse. And if you haven't got a scope, just use a LED strobe on a shiny flywheel and you'll be able to turn it and you'll see the one pulse come in. Um, as you can see, I never have to put heat sinks on my transistors, they never get hot, that's still stone cold. I only use half watt resistors, and they're still cold. One watt pot, um, never have any trouble. So, that's pretty much my lit for that. The second thing I wanted to have a look at was, um, it's been said, or uh, there's an idea going around if we take a lead from the positive of our charge battery and the negative of our run battery and put it into the AC side of a bridge rectifier and then come out of the bridge rectifier negative positive into a cap we'll get a lot higher voltage come into the cap than our combined voltage of our batteries which didn't make much sense to me, but I thought I'd give it a try anyway. So that's what I've done. Come off the negative side of my run battery, positive side of my charge battery. That's just come off, so I'll plug it back on. Um, it's a thousand volt uh, bridge rectifier. And then we're coming out of that into this little 300 volt um, flash to pass it around of a camera which is what's specified as well. So I hook that all up and I get 20.9394 volts which is the two combined voltages of the batteries minus the voltage loss through the diodes. So for me it's uh, not working at all. Nothing at all happening. And it's only a very tiny, tiny cap, so, what is it, 80 UF, 
80 microfarad so if there was going to be any higher voltages go through that most certainly would be in there by now so um, I'm counting that one out as a no-go like I said I've hooked it up exactly how it says in the diagram um, and nothing less than the voltage across the batteries because it's going through the two diodes of course so we're going to lose voltage through that so that'll be one trick I won't be trying because it doesn't seem to work so they're just the um, two things I wanted to go through tonight I'll put it in the test and tune section on our forum um, yeah so not much more to it tonight just a quick short one about getting that one pulse with our H-Wave optimum performance and um, trying this little trick with the uh, capacitor and the bridge rectifier off the two batteries which actually gives me less than what's already in the battery so um, still working on our new Bedini, Cultus and myself are going to build one of the original version mechanical switching uh, Cultus is going to electronic dump so hopefully you should have that up and running in the next couple of days um, oh yeah our little window motor over there still chogging along it's um, what been what is it, 20th today, two days going um, I just grab my voltage meter. I haven't checked the battery voltages today. And I can't change the um, charge battery over every five hours because I need some sleep. Um, okay, so our run battery at the moment sitting on. 3.99 volts, 3.98, 3.99, and our charge battery is 4.01, so that's going to be charged. But I also have been running the um, pretty little light off it as well. That's how I um, bring the charge battery down now. Instead of changing batteries over, I just pull it down to a couple of volts and charge it up again and see how many times I can do that on the one run battery so that run battery has dropped 0.04 of a volt over two days um, and I've probably run that light about uh, 20 minutes all up so far um, on the charge battery so it's not doing too bad it's falling down but it's keeping that charged and running our light every now and then so We'll leave it running and see how many days we can get out of it. Okay, till next time. See you from the team then.